At the beginning of the movie, the sound of music plays like a heartbeat, and the camera focuses on a woman's beautiful blue eyes. The darkness slowly covers the center of the eye and then fades away. This change reveals a mix of blue and green colors that turn into a picture of a grand bridge over the sea. Then, we see Ren Amari and Jared Amari sitting on the sandy beach, wearing cool black wetsuits. Everything is calm, and Ren playfully tries to convince Jared to go back into the water, but he's unsure. However, when Ren shows him goggles and flippers, he can't resist anymore. They jump into the clear water together, starting an underwater adventure. The scene shifts, and we see Ren in a tall building room. There's a mysterious black liquid coming from her right eye. There are empty eyedroppers around, suggesting a connection to the liquid. A countdown shows that Other Life's launch is in over six days. Ren talks to an interviewer from TDA, explaining how her education was disrupted because her brother almost drowned. She assures them he survived and talks about Other Life. It's more than a drug, it's a kind of biological software that creates seamless memories on a chemical level. Ren visits her unconscious brother, a constant reminder of her mission. Using a headband and a laptop, she gives him the black liquid through his eye. Then she gets on a train, ignoring her father's call. She's in a busy workspace with Byron, who urges her to handle approvals. In other life, she goes skydiving and wakes up with Byron. During the interview, her father is worried about the risks of her innovation and possible seizures. Ren compares it to the dangers of substance abuse. Her voice explains how she experienced a hiking trip, creating a perfect day using subconscious memories, and making a scripted reality with limits. Ren sets off on a snowboarding simulation, conquering a mountain before becoming trapped in an unsettling loop. After six days, Byron rescues her from this glitch. Undeterred, Ren is determined to fix it and believes in the popularity of the snowboarding experience. During a crucial sales pitch, Sam, the co-founder of Other Life, presents it as purchasable free time, where users can enjoy grand adventures. He stresses that other life is more than just simulation, it condenses years of experiences. The presentation concludes with Sam urging clients to envision their dreams within other life. Ren arrives as Sam's co-founder and explains the technology's core during the meeting. Afterward, she and Sam disagree about the company's future. She meets Danny, apologizes for putting work first, and then leaves. In the interview, concerns arise about other life's disconnection from reality and its isolating effects. Ren and Byron work on debugging the snowboarding simulation, with only a few days left until launch. She discovers a coding error after working late. Byron notes that Ren has run 482 tests, which is like spending 20 days immersed in a single real day. The focus shifts when Danny arrives with a report about long-term other life use, a request made by Sam. To Ren's surprise, she wasn't informed of this investigation while she was examining the findings. Moreover, she asks Byron not to exclude her from dealings with Sam. Byron and Danny consider the recursive glitch as a way to extend simulation durations, deciding to take a break over drinks. Meanwhile, Ren remains in the workspace, steadfastly focused on her work. Returning to the swimming simulation she shared with her brother, Ren sees the leftover evidence of her extensive testing, numerous empty droppers. In a contemplative moment, she records the results of her 340th test, recognizing the need for further experimentation. The interview team talks about how other life could help with brain and memory problems, which leads to a discussion about the ethical issues of putting ideas into people's minds. In the middle of this debate, Ren says that she only wants to work on what they're doing now. After that, she goes back to her brother's room and tries using other life again. She's hopeful when she sees his eye twitch a little. A nurse comes in, so Ren hides what she's doing and talks openly. The nurse says that these kinds of responses are normal, which shows that there's a lot they don't know yet. Retreating home, Ren studies data. Byron and Danny call, updating her on missed events. An email from her father arrives, discussing withdrawing life support for her brother. The next day, Ren visits her father, a professor. They talk about other life's morality and its potential to help her brother. A clash emerges, her father's concerns about human complexity versus Ren's belief in fixing it. Emotions peak as Ren asserts her brother's desire to escape. Her father seeks her backing for a tough choice. Ren's emotions unsettle her at work. She confides in Cass, seeking help to retrieve her files. Sam and Byron notice nanite stock discrepancies, questioning Ren about her experimental simulation. Cautious, Ren reveals little, sticking to its experimental nature. With Byron gone, she talks openly with Sam. 
he proposes repurposing other life for simulated prison rehabilitation. Ren firmly declines, frustrating Sam, and causing a heated argument. Meeting Danny, their shared turmoil connects them deeply. Conversation fades, vulnerability uniting them intimately. Following the tragic incident with Danny, Ren guides him through the snowboarding experience, contemplating the chemical essence of memory and existence. Their conversation unveils the stark reality of the technology's immersive impact. A casual mix-up leads to a catastrophic outcome. Danny ingests an experimental dropper meant for Ren's private use, sending him into violent seizures. As Ren summons medical help, the countdown clock ticks relentlessly, with a mere five days left until other life's public release. Ren and Sam navigate the legal labyrinth with the company's legal counsel, a conversation that clarifies other life's software nature as opposed to being labeled a drug. Sam requests a private conversation with Ren, seeking to unravel the details of the experience that resulted in Danny's demise. Strain and uncertainty linger in the interview as the question of Ren's ambition for technology looms unanswered. Faced with potential legal repercussions, Sam orchestrates a controversial solution to salvage the company's future. Ren reluctantly consents to a one-year confinement in other life, a plan that anguishes her as she grapples with Sam's ulterior motives. The notion of a one-year virtual prison term initially repels her, but the alternative, legal prosecution for Danny's death, drives her reluctant compliance. In the testing room with officials and Sam, Ren begins her year-long trial in other life. Isolated in a small chamber with a digital day counter, she follows a meticulous routine. The room resets each day, triggering strong reactions. Memories of Danny's seizure trouble her. Amid isolation, Ren probes her consciousness, pondering programming as resurrection. Memories of swimming with her brother intertwine. The confined space tests her sanity, and she finds comfort in unseen notes. Hope and despair mix as reality and simulation blur. The culmination of a year within the confining embrace of other life's simulated cell arrives with day 365, marked by a foreboding red light. Yet, against her expectations, the room resets to its initial state, triggering a surge of panic within Ren. Desperation propels her to unleash her frustration, shattering the room's confines as her escape routine fails to function. A haunting wind's whisper becomes a beacon, revealing an opportunity for freedom through a hidden gap. Ren navigates a labyrinthine journey through plastic sheeting and arrives in a vast warehouse-like expanse, housing her simulated cell alongside monitoring rooms and supply stores. Discovery transforms into evasion as Ren confronts the guard and orchestrates a daring getaway, procuring a truck to facilitate her escape. Her path leads her to a bustling world, where familiar other life advertisements pervade the scenery, and people go about their lives. Ren's first act is to reach out to the hospital, seeking an update on her brother's condition. Returning to her workplace, she's greeted by emptiness and alienation. New clothes offer a semblance of normalcy, but her past year remains a blur. A magazine cover showcasing Sam's face triggers a complex cascade of emotions. Engaging the police unveils an enigmatic puzzle. A missing person report filed for her, interwoven with evidence suggesting she had resided in Italy. Her efforts to explain the other life ordeal and her role as a co-founder are met with skepticism, as no charges seem to have been filed against her. Sam's unexpected arrival offers promises of safety and explanations. Yet, Ren's wary instinct urges her to shun him. Evading his grasp, she embarks on an odyssey to find Cass, who extends a sympathetic hand, granting refuge and nourishment. Cass reveals the misconception that Ren had abandoned her life for an Italian journey. Furthermore, Ren discovers a startling truth. Danny's survival, a reunion that reverberates with emotional gravity. Ren, Cass, and Danny gather at a restaurant, their shared experiences woven into a tapestry of intrigue. Danny recounts his brush with the swimming simulation, an immersive ordeal that echoed the sensation of drowning, his recovery marked by a week of testing. Other life's launch proves triumphant, with confinement becoming a cornerstone of the company's innovation, leading to proposals for sentences spanning decades or even centuries. Ren's yearning for answers intensifies, spurred by the theft of her father's patented technology by Sam. The discussion turns to strategies, with Danny urging Ren to consider fleeing or exposing the truth to the media. Ren's revelation sheds light on her underlying motivation. Her father's patent intended to aid her brother, now maliciously exploited by Sam. With Cass's ID badge in hand, Ren and Danny embark on a discreet mission within the building of other life to retrieve her stolen data. In Byron's office, they confront him, using Danny as a distraction while Ren seizes her hard drive. A struggle breaks out, and Ren lands a punch before escaping. 
The capture of Cass only heightens their anxiety. Hurrying to an other life printer, they make their way to Robert's house, their last refuge. The empty house becomes a haven. Amid the urgency, they cherish a calm morning and share a meal. Ren's feelings of regret surface, leading to a heartfelt talk with Danny that eventually leads to an intimate connection between them. The image of Ren's eye, recalling the movie's start, reappears as she wakes up to the sound of her father's return. In a sincere conversation with her father, Ren reveals the truth about Sam stealing her work. The revelation that her father was the one who reported her missing adds a new perspective to her year of captivity. Ren goes back to the other life printer, weaving together the various parts of her story. She exposes the unsettling truth behind Danny's experience in the swimming simulation. A subconscious choice that submerged him into a deep abyss, showcasing the unsettling potential of the technology. Ren's design intentions for the simulation were rooted in her desire to offer her brother Jared a lifeline. She created various paths within Other Life that could lead to his escape and eventual awakening. Her version of Other Life was built on the idea of rewriting memories, an idea both attractive and risky, like a powerful drug. Her fears mirrored a dark prediction of where the company was headed. Ren and her dad Robert want to slow Sam down, they ask TDA for a safety check so they can finish their version of the experience. Robert wants to wait, but Ren wants to print the experience right away. She goes to the hospital to help her brother, but he gets worse with seizures. Ren has to decide to take Jared off life support, which is sad. She feels bad about her choices. Her mind gets mixed up with memories, scenes from the testing room, and Byron's voice. Sam tells her that Jared is in a dreamlike world, which makes her think about how reality and imagination are connected. Reality continues to twist as Ren confronts her mind. She relives moments by the beach, caught within the shifting patterns of her creation. The sound of the crashing waves lures her towards surrender, while distorted voices guide her through a nightmarish journey into a crimson world. Ren wakes up once more, this time in the testing room. A whirlwind of emotions drives her to strike Sam before she attempts to erase the recording. Amidst the turmoil, she finds comfort in thinking about her brother, father, and Danny. With a newfound sense of calm, she sips tea, pondering her experiences and their significance. In the interview, Ren's ambitions become clear, a wish to offer others the chance to live remarkable lives that go beyond their imagination. With interviewer approval, the programming's release approaches. Sam and Ren have a bitter conversation where she regrets her actions and plans to leave. She aims for research, angering Sam, and leading to her departure. Amid Danny's funeral, Ren talks to her father about Sam. She urges him to visit the hospital, but Sam's call changes her plans. The office is now eerie. Facing Sam, Ren learns her escape became a basis for an exploitative experience. In a battle of wills, Ren resists Sam's manipulation, striving to maintain her integrity. The tension escalates as Sam's attempt to force her back into the simulation fails. The power struggle reaches its zenith, with Ren ensnaring Sam within the very experience he sought to exploit. Ren and Byron bear witness as Sam navigates the passage of days, a tense anticipation culminating in a catastrophic system crash. Ren's gambit to awaken Sam after his 365 plus one day ordeal is imbued with a bitter irony. Her resolve forces Sam to confront the same prison that ensnared her. When the ordeal ends, Ren and Byron leave Sam to grapple with the emotional aftermath. In the aftermath, Ren shares a poignant moment of mourning with her father at the hospital. Their collective grief for Jared binds them in a shared understanding of loss and healing. The narrative concludes on the bridge by the beach, where Ren gazes upon the expansive ocean.